for stable coins, for payment tokens to be relevant in that context, they need to be fast, they need to be scalable, they need to be cheap and available globally. Bridging the gap, the token economy and traditional finance. Let's explore the intersection between the traditional fiat money and the inevitable tidal wave of digital currencies. Georgi Sokolov, WireX app. Hello everyone. Hope some people are still not asleep and yeah, this message doesn't go completely unnoticed. Um, we were asked to talk about uh, token economy. Uh, and I think that for the economy, for the token economy to be an economy, uh, one of the preconditions is it needs to have some users who actually participate in the economy. It's not enough to just have uh, uh, the world blockchain in the name of whatever uh, business, and it's not enough to have a, a cool technology, however breakthrough it is. If no one is using it, it's not an economy. We can you look at uh, the DAP statistics with users' numbers in single thousands, if not hundreds, it's not an economy. So for an economy, it needs real use cases. So let me do a brief intro of Wirex. We've been focusing and building real use cases for token economy since 2014. Uh, the first product we did launch back then was a Bitcoin debit card, which addressed the pain point on the market of people not being able to spend their crypto wherever they wanted. Um, since then, we've grown to over two and a half million registered users. It's actually getting close to three million now. We have 200 employees over six offices around the world. We're headquartered in London. Uh, we're regulated by UKFCA. We're an um, e-money institution. Just uh, on a side note, it's not an Estonian license available off the shelf for 2,000 euros. It's a proper uh, license, difficult to get and uh, difficult to continue using. Um, and we have three main products. One is still the Wirex app and Wirex card, which allows you not only to spend crypto and not only Bitcoin, but many others. It also allows you to go back into crypto, so it's an effective um, on and off ramp. And when I buy myself a coffee, I also earn uh, crypto back, cash back in Bitcoin. Uh, the second product which we launched this year is crypto-friendly hybrid banking accounts for companies called Wirex Business which is another real use case. It helps crypto companies have a bridge with the real economy, or it helps traditional companies to uh, dip their feet into the crypto economy. And the last but not least is Wirex stablecoins, which we are just about to issue, and we'll stop on that a bit later. So if we ask to talk about token economy, uh, what is a token to begin with? Token is not an asset. It's a representation of an asset uh, recorded on blockchain, which makes it secure and which makes it quite efficient because tokens have quite a number of advantages. Um, they provide greater liquidity, especially for the less liquid assets, such as fine art or, or real estate. They are faster and cheaper just because the technology is superior to what was used in the last uh, decades. They offer more transparency and they're more accessible. They have less geographical limitations, so any, any asset can become more liquid and uh, reach more people. Uh, there are generally three types of tokens, currency or payment, utility tokens, and security. Uh, we're not gonna stop too much on, on, on the classification. It's not a theory lesson. Uh, depending on the tokens type, they can be used for clearances and settlements, for fundraising, for issuing securities, for trade finance, etc. Now, we at Wirex focus on particular use cases. Our main use case is uh, payments. That's why we're going to talk about currency payment tokens, in particular stable coins. Uh, we do believe that it's the future, at least for the near term. And um, so do 90% uh, so of members of European Payment Council who think that over the next five years, uh, tokens will change the payment industry uh, dramatically. Um, three main use cases for payment tokens or stable coins. Number one is cross-border payments. 
uh, stable coins eliminate the price volatility compared to um, more traditional cryptocurrencies. Um, in order to be interesting, they have to offer a notable improvement over the existing technology, which, generally speaking, is not too difficult. When talking about cross-border payments, a SWIFT takes about three days to complete, not to mention the cost. So, uh, clearly, uh, tokens in form of stable coins uh, serve the purpose there. They can offer instant settlement, they can reduce prefunding requirements. Uh, if we're talking any traditional money transfer business, they have to prefund accounts in different countries to allow for more or less uh, reasonable uh, timelines for, for, for the transfer, so user gets it relatively quickly and then the company settles it in bulk. They fall under existing regulatory framework because they're e-money, and uh, they offer seamless exchange into local currency because that market has existed for ages. It's called Forex. Just to summarize, fiat-backed stable coins uh, as payment tokens, have, we, we think they have got considerable advantage over um, other tokens with the, I don't know, probably Ripple will be a good example, because they are regulated versus unregulated, they are stable versus volatile, and they offer direct conversion into, into between currencies. Now, merchant payments, not necessarily cross-border, simple merchant payments can benefit from uh, payment tokens in form of stable coins as well. Uh, at present, if a business decides to accept crypto, then volatility risks are quite high. If a business con continues using Visa, MasterCard, or whatever um, card uh, theme they're using, uh, they, uh, they pay fees. Uh, stable coins can help in those. They offer instant settlements, there's no chargebacks, they're cheap, and they reduce the rolling reserves requirement. And machine-to-machine uh, -machine payments. It's not there yet, we're getting there, but it's predicted that by 2022, the number of devices, will interconnected devices that will need to uh, effect payments between each other will grow dramatically. That's, that's the chart. And um, for stable coins, for payment tokens to be relevant in that context, they need to be fast, they need to be scalable, they need to be cheap and available globally. And we think that fiat-backed stablecoins meet all those criteria, and that's why they're, for the near term, for the medium term, they are the future for payments. There are several types of stablecoins. Great projects uh, in decentralized space, make a DAO being one of them with their DAI. Some of them are still being developed, still to prove the concept. Fiat collateralized uh, stablecoins, we think they are already now ready to fulfill those missions because um, of, their, of their qualities. In the recent guidelines issued by the FCA, stable coins are classified as e-money, which means only regulated e-money institutions and banks can issue them, which helps them fall under existing legislation. It means that there is no need to wait for new legislation to come in. We just have to adjust to, to the existing one. Uh, and that's what we're building at Warex now again, uh, having bridged the gap for the everyday user with the card, for businesses with Warex business accounts. We're now issuing stable coins in 26 different currencies uh, that are going to be exchangeable at interbank rates that are fast, cheap, and scalable because they're built on Stellar. Stellar has 4,000 transactions per second. It's virtually instant transfers. I can top up my account with GBP and send it as stable coins to my friend in Singapore. It will reach them in seconds. They can cash out with their card in Singapore. They are regulated. They fall under existing e-money regulations with UK FCA. And they are focused on payments, on a real use case. So that's how we bridge the gap. If you want to ask any questions, talk to us, help us build the token economy, get in touch. Thank you very much. Yeah.